Advanced Algebra 2, Concept 3, Using Linear Models. In this vet video, I'm going to take you through finding a line of best fit. In earlier notes, we looked at finding a line of fit, and that's when we do a process by hand. We create a scatter plot by hand. We sketch a line or a trend line that closely appears to follow the trend of the data points. We choose two points on the line. Um, and then write the equation of the line from those points. Now when we find a line of best fit, that's when we use technology. And this video is going to show you how to use your graphing calculator. You can enter the data into your graphing calculator and then have your calculator run a program called a regression. We're going to have it run a linear regression where it can fit a line to the data. Our calculator is also going to give us a statistical measure of that fit. It's called the correlation coefficient. It's a number denoted by R from negative 1 to positive 1 and it shows how well that line and equation fits the set of data pairs. When um, R is near positive 1 then the lines lie close to each other and create what looks like a positive um, linear slope. If the correlation coefficient is close to negative 1, like over here, we have what's called a perfect negative correlation, where they appear to line up. Now, if you look at these graphs, so this is showing the range of R values. They can go from positive 1 to negative 1. The closer the R value is to positive or negative 1, the stronger the correlation, the better the fit, and the better the predictability value for your equation to predict the situation. When you have R values around 1 or negative 1, we say that that is a strong positive or strong negative correlation. When you have values around 0.8 to 1 and negative 0.8 to negative 1, we would also call that, call that a strong positive or strong negative correlation. Now when we start to get further away from 1 and closer to 0, then these relationships are not as strong. So you can see that a correlation coefficient of 0.3, that the graph data points are spread out. So if we were to draw a trend line through, it would loosely follow um, the trend of the data, but not closely. So we would call this a weak positive correlation. And likewise, if the R value is around negative 3, that would be a weak negative correlation. And then finally, when your R value is around 0 and your graph appears something like this, so that as you look at it, your eyes are not drawn in one direction or another, then that is a, a no, no correlation. So now you're going to need your graphing calculator, and we're going to go through one of the examples that we did um, by hand, but we're going to put it on the graphing calculator. And so we're going to enter the um, set of data here, the femur lengths in centimeters compared to the heights in centimeters. <clears throat> in your notes packet, turn to the back page and that has the directions step by step for how to enter the data. I will go to the directions in a moment. Um, but first, I'm just going to start out with this screen so you can see the data. So we want to turn on the correlation coefficient on the calculator, that R value. So you're going to go to your second button and your zero, and that pulls up the catalog of programs. And then you're going to go down. You can see that they're in alphabetical order. So we need to go to the program called Diagnostic On. So you can arrow down or you can use your alpha key. So below the second, it says alpha, and then you're going to press the key that is letter D, and that's just above this button, and we'll do that twice, and that will take us into the Ds and our list of programs. And now we're going to arrow to Diagnostic On, and then you need to hit Enter twice. That brings it up on your calculator, and then one more time, actually turns on that correlation coefficient. So now we're going to enter the data and you'll go through these steps every time you want to enter data into your calculator. So again, you can follow step by step on your note sheet. So first we're going to 
hit the stack key, which is just here in the middle. And then we want to get into the edit menu, so we press enter. If you have any data in your calculator, you can arrow up to the list name, press clear, and then enter. Then just arrow into the list if you need to, and then start entering your X values into list one and your Y values into list two. Don't rush this process because you want to make sure that you get all your data points in accurately. You can arrow over to the second list and then enter your Y values. Be really careful that you match the Y values with the corresponding X value that you see in the table of data. And then before you go on to the next screen, you're going to look for any errors. And so I do see a mistake in my list. I'm going to go up to this top Y value and I need to retype that as 170 because that would throw off um, my entire regression equation that the calculator would write for me. Now when we do this, the equation that the calculator generates for us should be very close to the one that we came up with when we did it by hand taking notes. And I'm just checking and that looks good. Now to look at a scatter plot of this data, we're going to go to the next set of directions. So since we have the data, I'm going to bring up those directions now. All right, so now we're going to create and see a scatter plot. So we're going to do that by turning on a scatter plot. So we're going to press second and then y equals. We want to make sure that number one says on. So if it does not, you're going to press enter to get into that menu and then you're going to press enter again so that on is highlighted. Now we're going to go right to look at the graph. To see the best window for our scatter plot, we're going to go to the zoom menu right across the top row of our keys here. And then number nine says zoom stat. So you can just press the number nine after the zoom key and that gives you the best window for that. Now you can see that this definitely is a set of linear data that these points are lining up and so that there is um, a constant rate of change between our input and our output. <clears throat> so we want our calculator to give us the best linear equation that it can. So now we're going to go to our next set of directions. We're going to find an equation to fit this data um, by having the calculator run a regression. So we're going to go to our stat button again but this time we're going to arrow over to calc that menu. And then if you look at all these choices, number four says linear regression. That's what that stands for. There are other regressions that we'll use later in the year. So press number four and that will highlight and bring up your linear regression. Now if you have the TI-83 um, plus CE like I have up, you're going to arrow down to where it says store regular equation. If you have another model, you're just going to it will have just one line up on your calculator and you're going to do the next um, key steps that we do together. <clears throat> so to have the equation go to our y equals menu, we're going to go through these series of keys here. So we're going to arrow down to our store regular equation, which we did, and now we're going to press a series of keys to get that equation that we're going to see in a moment. On into our y equals menu so it will graph right on top of our scatter plot points. So we're going to go to the vars key which is just underneath, or I think it stands for variables, underneath our arrow directional keys. Then we're going to arrow over to the right to our y vars or our y variables. Then we need to choose number one so you can either press number one or enter and then we need to choose number one again. So you can choose number one or enter. Now we're back to this screen, but we now see y sub one, and that means that our equation is going to be stored in our y equals menu. So we're going to arrow and tell the cal calculator to calculate. So now we have our equation. This tells you the template of the equation, and then these are the values. 
So if we round, it would be y equals 2.6x plus 65 rounding. And then if you look at the r value, so for linear, we're going to look at the r value for our correlation coefficient. Just look at the first four digits, 0.9945. So that is a very strong linear relationship. So that means the equation that we get is an excellent fit. Now, in your note sheet, go ahead and write down this and make a note. Um, so write down the equation in this form, y equals 2.6x plus 65, and then capture the r value, r equals 0.9945. And then also write down that this is a strong positive correlation, that this equation would have good predictability value for this situation. If we knew the lengths of I believe it's femurs, we could plug it in for x and predict someone's height. Or if we knew someone's height in centimeters, we could plug it in for y and predict their femur length. So every time you have a situation where you want to use your graphing calculator to help you write an equation for the situation, you can go through these um, steps. These steps will also not only work for a linear equation, but for other equations. Um, but again, You'll enter the data. Um, you may create and see the scatter plot just to determine what type of relationship is, if it's a good linear relationship. And then you'll go through the steps to run the regression.